हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरीवन दिस इज प्रोफेसर सदात सुराना आई होप यू गाइस आर डूइंग गुड और मैं तो हमेशा मस्ती रहता हूं वेलकम टू एपिसोड नंबर सिक्स ऑफ रिविजन कम अमेंडमेंट्स फॉर मे 23 एंड नवंबर 23 इन डायरेक्ट टैक्स फॉर सीए फाइनल एंड फॉर द कॉमन टॉपिक्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू सी ए इंटरमीडिएट इफ यू हैव बीन ऑब्जर्विंग इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ एवरी वीडियो आई हैव बीन मैंशनिंग द रेलिवेंट टॉपिक ऑफ सी ए इंटरमीडिएट स्टूडेंट ऑल्सो इन द लास्ट क्लास बिकॉज इट वॉज अज क्लास एंड we had to do the complete change of faceless assessment in detail so it was a long class and we had to stop assessment procedure in between so we will now continue with assessment procedure part the regular assessment part is done along with the faceless part and also that uh, dispute resolution panel wala part is done we now go ahead we will now go and learn the concept of income escaping assessment if there is some underpayment of tax and the ao realizes that there is income escape assessment it can be in the case of reopening which used to be reopening once upon a time and also all the surge cases when a surge is going to be conducted the order also in cases of surge will be passed under section 147 so whenever there is underpayment of taxes for some concealed income then the ao may assess or reassess your uh, income or compute your total income and pass an order under section 147 obviously for which a long list of sections notice of 148 the procedure that has to be followed under 148 a the time limit which is given in 149 the exceptions given in 150 some amendments also have taken place so in principle whenever there is income escaping assessment the ao will pass your order invoke proceedings and pass your order under section 147 here only the explanation clearly says that once he gives you a notice with respect to section 147 the notice will be given in 148 and he has followed the procedure of 148 a then any issue that comes to his notice subsequently in the course of his proceeding he can give it to you or he can take up that issue without following the procedures of uh, without following the procedure of 148 a again means before giving you the first notice he has to follow the procedure once he has followed now he has given you for say for example doubt about traveling expense deduction he has given you the notice now later on if he has doubt about telephone expense or electricity expense also he need not follow the procedure again he can just take up those issues what is this procedure that has to be followed under section 148 a before doing anybody's search uh, before doing anybody's 147 ka order you will have to conduct an inquiry and provide an opportunity of being heard before issue of notice under section 148 matlab let's be clear that 147 ka order will be the last step before order we obviously know that there is always going to be a notice because notice will open and order will close but this is going to be done before notice so if you understand the chronology first it will be 148a procedure then it will be 148 notice and finally it will be 147 ka order so ao will conduct any inquiry if required with the prior approval of specified authority in 151 we have the specified authority we will revise as the section comes in the book he will take the prior approval and conduct an inquiry with respect to income that has escaped assessment opportunity of being heard is going to be given a show cause notice will be given and the assessee within the time given which may be minimum 7 days and maximum 30 days you will have to the assessee will have to explain the show cause notice is basically going to ask him why 148 notice should not be given i have doubt about you i propose to conduct 147 so why should i not give you the notice is there any reasonable cause why i should not give you that notice this procedure has to be done and <clears throat> in response to this show cause notice the assessee has to basically explain why i will not be covered under 147 so the ao will consider his reply and finally he will decide whether this is a fit case for 147 and then whether i should give the 148 notice or no so before giving the notice this procedure has to be followed and this order has to be passed within one month from the end of the month in which the reply is received or if no reply is received then one month from the end of the month in which the time expires within this time the order will be passed this is only to decide that yes there will be the assessment or no there will not be the assessment this is not the final order final order will be passed under 147 this is to decide whether i am going to do reassessment or i am not going to do reassessment loves me loves me not reassessment no reassessment something like that however this section will not apply means alternatively you can say that the ao need not follow the procedure and directly give the notice of 148 case 1 if a search has been conducted or requisition is given did i tell you that search cases will also now be assessed here 
So if we have already conducted a search, mean definitely there is a case of income escaping assessment. That is the reason we conducted the search. And now that we have conducted the search, that search itself was a procedure. No need to give the, uh, no need to do the procedure. Again, already we saw that subsequent matters there will be no procedure that was given in this explanation here itself. Second time you don't need to do, but here you don't need to do for the first time also. That means if you have conducted a search, you can directly give 148 notice without following the procedure. If the AO is satisfied that any uh, search which is conducted at other person's premises or acquisition which is given to other person and there any books of accounts or assets belonging to the SSE have been found. So effectively, you can say this is a merger of search and requisition only in case of search being conducted or requisition being given to the SSE himself or to a third party where books of accounts or documents or assets belonging to the SSE have been found and this is an amendment if there is any information received under section 135A so procedure need not be followed. So these four cases plus if once followed the second time need not be followed again otherwise in all other cases first the procedure will be followed inquiry will be conducted we will decide whether we have to do reassessment or we don't have to do reassessment for this entire concept of reassessment who is going to be the prescribed authority if it has to be done within three years from the end of the assessment year then it will be the CIT or the DIT and of course the CIT DIT includes the principal post also and if you want to do beyond three years so supposingly this is previous year this is assessment year if you want to do within three years then you have to take the permission of CIT DIT and if you want to do beyond three years then it has to be the principal of principal chief commissioner or principal director general and if of course there is no principal post then the CCIT DGIT simply put within three years approval has to be from the commissioner level the director level and beyond three years it has to be from the chief commissioner the director general level obviously now that we have done the procedure we are going to give the SSE a notice so very simple simple point for doing 147 notice has to be given you are following the procedure of 148a but we already saw certain cases it need not be followed search requisition sell for other person where books of accounts and assets are found and second time need not be done and finally we will decide whether 148 notice has to be given or no prior approval has to be taken within three years cit rank and beyond three years ccit rank however if the approval was taken before 148a deco there will be some cases where procedure will not be followed direct notice then we have to take approval before notice and there will be some cases where the procedure has to be followed if anything which does not fall in these cases that means the procedure has to be followed and in that the procedure if you have taken approval of higher authority the procedure itself requires that you have to take the approval of the higher authority then again before notice they go first the approval then you follow procedure once you follow the procedure then you give notice then at that time no need to take approval again but cases where you give notice without procedure there you will have to obviously take the approval before the notice so that small amendment as a clarification has taken place obviously 149 ka time limit has to be complied and if there is any income escaping assessment then the AO will take action on that fresh return has to be filed even if already filed failure will result in best judgment assessment and you can get a single notice for multiple assessment years also what are the explanations that are given here what do you mean by income has escaped assessment all throughout we are saying income escape assessment what do you mean by that one system trigger any information that is flagged by the risk management strategy formulated by CBT artificial intelligence something that I was talking about in the earlier episodes also artificial intelligence say, charitable trust mein bola tha. artificial intelligence say, we will identify apart from that if there is any audit objection <coughs> then we can <coughs> conclude that the income escape assessment if there is any information with respect to bilateral treaty then there is income escaping assessment any information received under 135a or any information which requires action due to order of any tribunal or court it can be under the income tax law it can be any other law in these cases it will be considered that income has escaped assessment and accordingly we have to do all the procedure of 148a and the notice however it has been clarified that if the search has been conducted or requisition has been done or survey has been conducted excluding TDS wala survey survey conducted excluding the TDS wala survey <coughs> or the survey which is conducted at a function ceremony or event or the search requisition or survey has been conducted at other person's premises and over their books of accounts documents or assets of the SSE have been discovered then in that case it is going to be considered that income has escaped assessment in this case also it will be considered that income has escaped assessment so we now know the cases where it will be treated considered as that the income has escaped assessment it is given in the 
explanation. Next section 148B is an amendment for any case covered in this explanation. That means search survey requisition cases. Search survey requisition cases for any case which is covered in this order cannot be passed by anyone below JCIT. Means the person who will pass your order will be minimum JCIT. Five levels of AO, additional joint deputy assistant ITO. In such cases, order cannot be passed below JCIT except if there is permission taken from additional or joint. So, additional and joint are the senior most assessing officers. Joint has to pass the order. Below joint, order cannot be passed. However, if the additional or joint approves, then below joint also the order can be passed. But that is in which cases? Search, requisition and survey wala cases. Next section 149 has given us the time limit to issue. By this date, the notice has to be issued. Normal time limit, very easy. Three years from the end of the relevant assessment year. Three years from the end of the relevant assessment year. So, 20 to 23 is your previous year, assessment year, three years. However, in certain cases, three will become 10. That means, in other words, you can say that extra 7, 3 plus 7 equal to 10. It is not 10 extra years. It is extra 7 years. So, where we have added 3, we will add 10 and accordingly, our answer is going to be from AY 23 24, we add 10 years, we get assessment year 23 24. But when will the, uh, uh, the we get 31st March 34? When will the time limit of 10 years be applicable? If the AO has in his possession books of accounts or documents which reveal that income represented in the form of asset, Matlab, he has converted his concealed income in asset. Which asset? Immovable property, which can be land building or both, shares and securities. Loans and advances, deposits in a bank account, immovable property, shares and securities, loans and advances, deposits in a bank account and here also there is an amendment. Expense with respect to any transaction, event, occasion or any entries in books of accounts which is equal to or more than 50 lakh. First of all, let me be clear, equal to 50 lakh is also covered. Income escaping assessment is greater than or equal to 50 lakh, not greater than, equal to will also be covered. But that income is converted into five assets. Four were existing, one is an amendment. Which? Immovable property, shares and securities, loans and advances, deposits in a bank account. And plus there is an amendment in respect of transaction relating to any event or occasion or entry in books of accounts. In such cases, we will not apply three years. We will apply ten years extra seven. And of course, just like section 153 time limit to pass order, certain cases the time limit is going to be excluded. You can say this much extra time is going to be given. Approval of higher authority, we already saw within three years, commissioner level, beyond three years, chief commissioner level. There are some cases where this time limit is not going to be applicable. That means we can send the notice even after this period. If we want to give effect to higher authority in an appeal revision reference or court under other law in force. However, in case of uh, in case of clause A, if the original time limit had already expired, then, then 149 ka time limit is going to be applicable if at the time of original order first time when you were assessed if the time limit had expired then we cannot use clause a here all the reassessment proceedings will also now be done faceless see other than search and survey everything is going to happen faceless the same transparency efficiency accountability scheme and lastly section 152 in the reassessment concept that the tax rates that we will apply on your income that has escaped assessment will be of the past year of the year of income tax rates will be of the past year and if the assessee proves that there is no impact on his tax liability then the notice can be dropped also so tax rates will be of the past year and if there is no impact on tax then the notice can be dro uh, dropped also drp ka concept we have already completed next is section 153 time limit to complete assessment that is pass the order one by one first for regular assessment it will be nine months from the end of the relevant assessment year this has continuously undergone changes but this year there is no amendment so if we see previous year 20 to 23 your exam year AY 2324, we had nine months. And I request you to learn this date because it can help you to understand the other concepts also. So 31st December 24 is going to be the last date. However, in case of reassessment, so one is your regular assessment, other is your reassessment. Earlier it used to be nine, but for notices that are given on or after 1419, and today we are in 23. So notices on or after 1419, we will see 12 months from the end of the financial year in which the notice was served. So, supposingly if we talk about AY2324, your exam year. So, if we calculate the three years time limit, the normal time limit, then last date to issue the notice will be 31st March 27. It can be served later also because last date is to issue, issue, issue. In 149, they have used the word issue. So, notice which is issued on 25th March and served on 28th March is valid. This is the previous year or financial year 26-27. Then from here we add 12 months, we get this. However, a notice which is issued on 28th March 
and served on 1st April is also valid because time limit is to issue up to this date. If it is issued up to this date, then that notice is also going to be considered as a valid notice. Bolo yes or no? But then here, the time limit for passing order will be counted from this financial year and this is 27-28. So, just because of a 3 year delay, extra time is going to be available by one full year to the assessing officer to complete the assessment. This is also a valid notice because issued on time. This is also valid notice because issued on time. But time limit of order will start from year. From year. And this is a different financial year. Accordingly, one extra year will be given. So, very smartly played by our government. In the time limit of notice, they have used the word issue. But in the time limit of order, they started from the date of service from the year of service. Next, fresh assessment order. Whenever an AO is passing an order which has mistakes, if the mistakes cannot be corrected like a time barred order, then we have to do annulment that is void have an issue. Obviously, there will be no further action. Annulment can be done by CIT appeals and ITAN. However, sometimes if example an order is passed without inquiry, so we can correct it by doing inquiries or investigation. Such orders will be set aside means this order is cancelled. In its place, we will conduct something called a fresh assessment which will be done by the AO but as per the instructions of CIT and ITAD. Bol bo rahe hai, par shabd hamare hai. It will be done by the AO but instruction will be of CIT and ITAD. Here also, earlier it used to be 9 months but on or after 1419 it will be 12 months from the end of the year in which in case of CIT he sets aside or in case of ITAD because it is an outside body to communicate and now an order which is passed by the transfer pricing officer of computation of arms length price under 92 CA in the revision chapter 263 264 it has been stated that even that order can be set aside so till now in order of assessing officer it was possible to be set aside uh, AO, will, uh, AO, uh, AO will pass an order CIT or ITAD will set aside AO has to do fresh assessment and now TPO ka order will also be set aside TPO will have to do fresh computation of ALP and the assessment order accordingly also has to change so understand TPO computed ALP this is an amendment so I am explaining TPO computed ALP on the basis of that ALP assessing officer passed assessment order but we are setting aside the TPO's ALP order automatically assessment order will also change understood or no so, with effect from AY23-24, even order of TPO can be set aside. Even order of TPO can be set aside. Next, in all the cases, whether regular assessment, reassessment or fresh assessment, if you are a case of transfer pricing, you all know. Everywhere it is going to be 12 months extra. Order giving effect to incorporate the order of higher authority, 3 months from the end of the month. If it is CIT, then he passes, other hai to, they communicate the order. Order giving effect by AO to fresh order of TPO where original order was set aside. Means, TPO passed an order. AO passed assessment order based on that. If TPO ka order is set aside, to AO has to do one more assessment order based on new TPO order. Two months from the end of the month in which the new order of TPO is received. Two months from the end of the month in which the order of TPO is received. Because of partner, because of firm, if there is order on partner, then 12 months from the end of the month in which CIT passes or ITAD communicates and in case of reassessment order which are dealt with section 150 where time limit is not applicable then for that it is going to be a separate time limit 12 months from the end of the month again in which CIT passes the order or ITAT or any other authority communicates the order. One more amendment that has taken place because of this concept updated return which is a new concept if return is filed under this provision then the time limit of scrutiny or base judgment which is nothing but your regular assessment order shall be 9 months from the end of the financial year in which ROI was filed. See understand ordinarily regular assessment ka time limit is 9 months from the end of relevant assessment year. But updated return can be filed later also no. 24 months we are giving no. So in that case it will be 9 months from the end of the year in which the ROI was filed in case of updated return. The time limit is to pass the order so copy can be sent later order is considered to be passed when he decides income and tax if income and tax is decided even on a rough piece of paper it is understood that he has passed the order on time and these cases where the time limit will be extended the extension will be given with respect to time lost in all these cases you can just read through it and minimum 60 days will be given ITSC ka point you can ignore next mera paisa de re baba demand notice assessment order will decide your liability demand notice will tell you to Pay. There is no time limit to issue demand notice, but by now we know that wherever there is no time limit for notice, the order has to be passed on time. So, if the order is passed on time, there is no time limit for giving demand notice. Two Supreme Court judgments. First, Ranchi Club, demand notice can demand only that amount which was there in the assessment order. Demand notice cannot increase your liability, it can only demand. 
and second if there is any computation sheet computation sheet will be treated as a part of the order so computation sheet is a part of the order and therefore it can be demanded in the demand notice it is like a working note working note should form a part of your answer and the supreme court judgment shelley products if the original order is set aside declared as void ab initio or annulled or invalid or anything a cc cannot claim refund of the entire amount paid see extra you don't pay but what you have accepted as your liability that cannot be demanded supreme court judgment shelley products one more amendment that has taken place modification and revision of demand notice if the demand notice ka demand ka amount is reduced by the adjudicating authority under insolvency and bankruptcy court then the ao will have to modify the demand notice so it is possible that we go under ibc where the adjudicating authority reduces the income tax department ka rights so the demand notice ka amount has to be accordingly modified but later on if the adjudicating authority ka order is further changed by the company law appellate tribunal or the supreme court then again we have to revise so first demand notice was given adjudicating authority changed it so we will modify and then nclt or supreme court again changed it so we will again revise it accordingly so demand notice can be modified or revised accordingly just like we get intimation of income we'll get intimation of loss also and all these procedures rectification we are doing which is given in 154 155 or 155 demand notice and your intimation of loss they also will happen faceless now now if mistake ho gaya galti se mistake ho gaya to there will be rectification apparent mistakes will be rectified in 154 and other mistakes will be rectified in 155 apparent mistake can take place in an intimation it can take place in an order apparent mistake means something which is not under dispute very very clearly visible for example 5 minus 1 equal to 3.5 is a mistake it need not be disputed or explained of course it is going to be appealable if the ao refuses to do the rectification so that way rectification is undisputed because it is a clearly visible mistake apparent mistake but if he refuses then of course you can go for appeal rectification can happen only with respect to those matters that have not gone in appeal because anything that has gone in appeal obviously out of assessing officers control it can be done suo moto or an application by the assessee obviously if the mistake has increased your liability then assessee will go and if the mistake has reduced your liability then the ao will do it suo moto if you are applying no need to pay any fees no need to fill up any form you can directly apply on a plain piece of paper apparent mistake can be because of human error retrospective amendment or high court supreme court order it can be treated as apparent mistake and apparent mistake will be rectified under 154 the time limit will be 4 years from the end of the year in which the order was passed so for example for this year the order is passed on this date which is within the time limit but if there is any mistake the so last date to rectify will be counted from this year 24 25 plus 4 years 31st march 29 but if the assessee applies we can't make him wait for 4 years if the assessee applies then we have to do within 6 months from the end of the month of application rectified order also can contain mistakes that can also be rectified rectification can be done unlimited time same as revised return however a very important judgment supreme court in wire industries doctrine of merger not applicable english every rectified order will get a fresh period for example if we continue this example supposingly the rectified order is passed on this date so that way it is within the time limit this was the last date but if this order contains any mistake then from year we will count 4 years and accordingly fresh period of 4 years is going to be given so every time there is a mistake fresh period of 4 years will be given and what about mistake due to future event if there is something which was correct when it was passed but later it became wrong then 4 years from the end of the year in which the future event took place 4 years from the end of the year in which the future event took place last part of assessment procedure liability in special cases if you have died you still have to pay taxes there are two things certain death and taxes there is one more thing certain taxes after death listen to me carefully some great men said two things are certain in life death and taxes one great man is saying one more thing is certain taxes even after death so who will file roi if you have died who will be present for summons or who will pay the tax interest penalty if there is any legal representative whom you have appointed like your power of attorney holder or your lawyer or anyone then he will do it only if appointed and only till distribution because later everything will go to the 
legal hair and if there is no legal representative then from day one it will be legal hair obviously from partnership chapter we have been learning the maximum liability is going to be to the extent of inheritance in other words the legal hair will never be made to pay anything from his own pocket maximum liability is going to be to the extent of inheritance then we have something called representative assessee if the assessee is alive still there can be someone else to represent for example minor lunatic or idiot then parent or guardian for non resident there will be agent for trust there will be trustee insolvency cases may the insolvency professional the resolution professional that is appointed or court appointed receiver or assignee then such person what is the liability same file return be present and all and what are the rights where they will not pay anything from own pocket if they have paid then they will recover other things like you continue to be liable even if you have left the directorship of a company or anything all that you can just read that's our chapter the biggest chapter of the syllabus assessment procedure with huge number of amendments moving on immediately after assessment if you are agree with the assessment if you are not happy then you will go for something called appeals appeal means finding a complaint with higher authority obviously it cannot be done at an equivalent or lower authority so if an assessing officer is passing an order an assessment order and if the assessee is aggrieved against the order the assessee can file appeal for which there are four levels given in income tax level 1 cit appeals level 2 ITAT. Actually, we casually call them four levels, but there are only two levels of appeal because the third level and the fourth level, High Court and Supreme Court, we can go only if there is a question of law, and thus it is reference. Whenever the law is silent, and we can go to High Court, Supreme Court, that will be called reference. So, casually speaking, four levels. Legally speaking, two levels of appeal, two reference, two appeals, and two reference. CIT appeals and ITAT, you can go to High Court only if question of law. So, High Court, Supreme Court only we call it reference, and obviously hierarchy has been has to be. followed you can't jump you can't go from foundation to final directly obviously you have to fill up the form pay the fees and do it within the time limit but the most important aspect is that there are nine orders in income tax which are non appealable non appealable non appealable nine orders ke against you will not be allowed to file any appeal what first order leaving interest of 234 abc non appealable i tat ka order on a question of fact non appealable because you can go to high court only if there is a question of law order of itsc ar non appealable you can ignore because both itsc and ar are now abolished you can convert 9 into 7 also if you want if there is any rejection of revision application under 264 or final order these two are non appealable matlab one thing 263 is appealable and he will be it who will do it cit will do it so obviously where will be appeal itat but 264 is not appealable not the rejection and not even the final order any order of cit reducing or waiving penalty under 273 a is non appealable and any order under 270 a rejecting the waiver application under 270 a let's be clear penalty is levied in this section for which you file a uh, waiver application in this if the waiver application is rejected you can't appeal against the rejection and next if the waiver application is accepted then no penalty but on the condition that tax what we have decided is final that means your assessment order which is normally appealable will become non appealable so understand if waiver application is rejected so you can't appeal against the rejection but you can appeal against the assessment order reduce your tax automatically penalty will be reduced but if waiver application is accepted then that you are happy no no penalty but on the condition that tax will be final as per decided by the ao the assessment order will become non appealable then one by one we will learn the four levels of appeal cit appeals is the first level your appeal can be filed only by the assessee because we are coming against the assessing officer hello so only the assessee can file the appeal here department cannot appeal against its own order but cit appeals can take anybody's favor so at itet whoever is the losing party can file an appeal very important this has to be done within a period of 30 days but from the copy of order and if there is any delay it can be called on by cit form prescribed form number 35 statement of facts go grounds of appeal and copy of order to be appealed against plus you have to pay some fees what fees if your assessed income is up to 1 lakh then 250 between 1 lakh and 2 lakh then 500 more than 2 lakh then 1000 and appeal not with respect to income then 250 for example any ultra wires act you want to get your order nullified void ab initio annulled then 250 will be applied cit will consider the appeal only if you have paid the tax on income that you have shown in ROI or if you have at least paid your advance tax, then only your appeal will be considered. The CIT will try to dispose of the appeal in time limit if possible, because of if possible this is irrelevant. Then what are the appealable orders? Long list of orders: your intimation, your regular assessment, your reassessment, your search assessment. Everything will come here. 
and if you want to avoid this long trouble i mentioned it also if you want to avoid the trouble of learning so much in detail so idea anything which is not there in these nine non appealable orders see there are nine non appealable orders seven ho gaya because two are abolished but primarily there are nine if it is not in nine that means it is appealable not in nine that means it is appealable not in nine that means it is appealable one level up so if ao has done go to cit if cit has done go to iit iit has done go to high court high court has done go to supreme court if supreme court has done something go home go to sleep supreme court is life like your wife you cannot appeal against the order of supreme court is that understood so anything that is not in nine and done by ao so you can come to cit appeals likewise not in nine done by cit then i gets and so on and so forth appeal can be withdrawn before the first hearing full cit appeals ka concept will also happen online electronically faceless appeals ke naam se it is going to be done can cit appeals grant stay madras high court in the case of polson dito works held that as ao and tro have the power cit appeal will also get the power by the way the law is silent the act is silent on this issue moving further second level of appeal i tat is the second level of appeal this can be filed by ssc or department both because whoever is the aggrieved party at cit will come here here the time limit will be 60 days from copy of order and delay can be condoned by i tat form number will change from 35 to 36 statement of facts grounds of appeal and all that is going to be same fees is a little different if the assessed income is up to 1 lakh then 500 between 1 lakh and 2 lakh then 1500 more than 2 lakh then 1% but not more than 10000 1% but restricted to 10000 appeal not with respect to income like ultra wide act 500 then rectification ke liye bhi they want 50 rupees dekha ji if you file something called memorandum of cross objection which i will explain in the next point then that can be done free but sabse gussa wala the most that that the biggest thing that will make you angry is all the fees has to be paid by the assessor for the department there is no fees department can file appeal free of course fees is to be paid only by the assessee except in memorandum of cross objection what is that you have to file it if you are a respondent so appellant will appeal then you will be the respondent so you have to give cross objection on the appeal so that some matters are dropped so that respondent will file iska form is 36a this will be done with the, without any fees appeal has to be done with fees but only for assessee not for department and memorandum of cross objection can be done without fees also within 30 days from the notice of hearing here also delay can be condone list of appealable orders if you don't want to learn now let us make it easy anything which is not covered in nine non appealable order that means it is appealable and it is done by cit cit appeals ccit da dgit ke samne bhi you can't go to cit appeals no you have to go to ir authority i tell drp drp comprises of three commissioners so iske against bhi you can't go to cit appeals <laughs> so anything done by commissioner rank you go to the itat even chief commissioner rank you go to the itat can itat grant stay yes but that stay will be for maximum period of 180 days and we can give extension in a way that the total becomes maximum 365 days but extension only if delay is not due to assessee and you have paid 20% of the disputed amount 20% of the disputed amount has to be paid and if the appeal is not disposed then the recovery proceeding will automatically resume with respect to this total 365 days there is a pepsi coca supreme court judgment i think i must have uploaded the explanation either on youtube or i uh, if not uploaded on youtube i must have definitely given it with the case law lecture last year itself and this year ka students whenever the case law ka lecture will be recorded it will definitely find a place surprisingly for may 23 november 23 institute has not released only any new study material la like hashtag thug life material hi nahi banaya the but supplementary paper is given that these are the new changes you learn you have your text professor no so you learn he will teach you everything humko kuch nahi karna so there is a supreme court judgment of pepsi co so whoever is the subscriber of our full course or crash course lectures of course all the books are given also in uh, along with the full course and crash course including the hand written book uh, so if you have subscribed to the full course or crash, uh, crash course then the case law lecture will be given to those students and in that we have discussed the pepsi coca case law where even after 365 days the stay was valid because of covid times the courts were not functioning okay otherwise after 365 days the stay will be automatically vacated and recovery will resume if there is any mistake in the order then that has to be rectified within 6 months from the end of the month of that order here also there will be t scheme matlab itat will also work face that faceless appeals at cit appeal and faceless appeal at itat also itat is an organization unlike cit appeals who is a human being so there will be a president 
who can be any vice president or any person who has been high court judge for seven years can become president but as per protocol generally the vice president will also will always become the president two types of judges judicial member and accountant member what is the qualification if you have held any judicial office any magistrate or city magistrate or metropolitan magistrate additional magistrate district magistrate if you have been any judge in any tribunal anywhere for 10 years if you have been a liar advocate for 10 years or more or if you have been an officer of indian legal service then you can become judicial member law background or if you have been a ca holding cop for 10 years or if you have been an officer of indian income tax services for a minimum period of 3 years then you can become accountant member accounting background law and accounts when combined it becomes tax think about it this is a very deep statement what is tax combination of accounts and law so we need people from both backgrounds it is a very deep statement you think about it okay so we need people from both backgrounds the case will be handled by a bench single member bench means one judge if income is up to 50 lakh division bench maximum cases goes to go to division bench where there will be two judges one judicial and one accountant member sometimes there can be a special bench of these many judges also okay now a comparative analysis of the powers of cit appeals and ITAT. if you observe both can reduce assessment reduce assessment means reduce your tax liability both can confirm means whatever AO has decided is same cit appeals can increase but ITAT cannot increase your assessment both can do annulment if there is any ultra wires act but set aside ka power is not there with cit appeal set aside was cit and ITAT. cit and ITAT. cit appeals and ITAT was annulment and set aside was CIT and ITAT. So, here set aside ka power is not available. Both can reject your appeal, both can do rectification, but they cannot do change in opinion. Both cannot do change in opinion. Review, reconsider, reappreciate. Review, reconsider, reappreciate. It all will be called as change in opinion. Other powers very simple. Condon, delay, inquiries, any other matter, additional evidence. They can do everything. Both can do. Stay of recovery. ITAT can be doing it. 180 days extended up to 365 days. As far as CIT is concerned, the act is silent, but Madras High Court Paulson Ritovak said that CIT will also get the power. Additional ground of appeal can be also taken and power to award cost. The loser will pay compensation to the winner of the case. That is not allowed in CIT appeals. That is allowed only in ITAT. Therefore, in ITAT, they have cross objection also. We don't want time to be wasted out here. Finally, if we talk about appeal at High Court or Supreme Court, at High Court only if it is question of law, means act is also silent, no case law and no binding precedent but in supreme court if high court gives you special leave petition means high court finds it a fit case matlab the organization that will pass order will decide whether you can appeal against it or no that's how funny our indian laws are form and fees here both places will be decided by civil procedure court because high court supreme court work for all the laws not just for income tax this appeal has to be done within 120 days this has to be done within 90 days so effectively it is 30 60 120 and 90 condonation of delay available to both power to grant stay rectify reject award cost anything which is available at junior level will be available to senior level obviously the power to review reconsider reappreciate change in opinion supreme court may it is allowed because there is no further authority high court may traditionally it was not allowed but supreme court in this case law megalia still said that high court will also be given the power to review so till now only supreme court had power to review now high court supreme court both will be given the power to review next the power to avoid repetitive appeal if an appeal is pending at high court supreme court then you need not pass the order for the same transaction for future year we will wait for the first year ka order and apply for all the future years and in 158 a b so see 158 a was there 158 double a was there that same power will be given to the assessee 158 double a ko abolish karke they have introduced 158 a b Aani, auntie ko hai. forget it same as applicable in 158a however the year the mechanism will be triggered by the department when the collegium that is a team of two or more cits so this will be triggered by the assessee assessee will come and say sir don't pass the order wait but here where a collegium means a group of two or more cits pc cits they feel that it is an identical question then only we will apply this and this also assessee has to accept but most cases assessee will accept reason being he will also save, uh, save time, money, energy and effort. No? So, assessees will also generally accept. And last point here, if a higher authority has passed an order in the favor of assessee, then department should appeal. 
if department does not appeal then obviously department has accepted the case but now department will not be allowed to appeal in future for any assessment on the same matter matlab accepting one case has got far reaching impacts for the department they cannot appeal in cases of other people also however cbrt lays down monetary limits for certain appeal that you need to appeal only when this monetary limit has exceeded so if the department did not file the appeal due to the monetary limit then cbrt can appeal in future means in the case of assessi a if cbrt uh, if uh, department does not appeal further because of the monetary limit laid down by cbrt then in case of assessi b they will be allowed to appeal which is normally not allowed that's the revision of our chapter appeals let's go ahead next chapter revision this is not that revision which we are recording revision come amendment this is revision of orders orders of regular assessment reassessment rectification only orders not intimation of ao and now as we already saw that even tpo ka order can be set aside and that also has to be revised so order of ao or tpo order of ao or tpo will be revised by the cit or ccit cit or ccit matlab cit pcit and ccit pccit because both have the principal post also so order of ao will be revised if you have made any mistake then the original order will be set aside and the fresh order has to be passed and same thing will now be done by the tpo also so first if the orders are prejudicial to the revenue that means the order passed which is in favor of assessee we will change it it is an erroneous order if passed without inquiries not according with the directions of cbrt or not according to high court or supreme court order then the commissioner can either enhance or modify and set aside and if he sets aside then ao will have to do fresh assessment obviously if we are cancelling this favor that means we will increase liability and if we are increasing liability then ponge has to be followed because we are increasing liability this revision is appealable do we know 264 is non appealable even the final order even the rejection but here also only those matters can be revised that have not gone in appeal so out of 90 matters if 10 have gone in appeal then out of 100 matters if 10 and gone in appeal then only 90 can be revised out here so those matters that have gone in appeal have already gone to equivalent or higher authorities here we cannot do the revision but those matters that have not gone in appeal we can do the revision this can also be done unlimited time but within the time limit and the time limit is 2 years from the end of the year in which the order erroneous order was passed only order not intimation 2 years from the end of the year in which the erroneous order was passed so for example if an order is passed on this date then the last date is going to be 24 25 plus 2 years that is 31st march 27 this supreme court judgment has been asked multiple times for example if the order was passed on 31st october anything that has gone in appeal obviously there is no question of reassessment or revision or anything but anything that has not gone in appeal can we do reassessment also can we do revision yes supposingly 15 matters went under reassessment and the reassessment order is passed on this date and the remaining 75 are therefore final in scrutiny assessment ultimately even this can be revised even this can be revised because regular assessment or reassessment it is done by the ao and 263 will be done by the cit so it can be done with respect to these matters so obviously time limit will be counted from here so this is going to be the last date but what about these matters that have not gone in reassessment it will be counted from the original order the original order ka mistake will be from original order and fresh order ka reassessment order ka mistakes ka revision we will do from the reassessment order the doctrine of merger will not be applicable so for matters not covered under reassessment time limit will be from original order and one more supreme court judgment manjunathaeshwara packing and camphor works he can take all the evidences that are available at revision time whether they were there at the time of assessment or no part 2 of the chapter revision of other orders that is 264 orders which are in favor of department that means orders which are against the assc that means this revision will reduce your liability that is why it will be rejected the rejection is not appealable and final order is also not appealable so 264 will always result in reduction in tax it can be done on own motion rubbish cit will never do it on own motion why will it reduce your tax liability on own motion never on application by assessee this makes sense because tax will be reduced but what if i tell you in real life this will also not happen reason being here if your case gets rejected you cannot appeal it is rather better to go to cit appeals where you may lose but you can at least fight further so application of assessee is also not under you know practically it is not possible the only thing where c264 is applicable or can be applicable in practical life theoretically they can write anything 
this time limit is one year from receipt of order and the CIT appeals is 30 days. So, if 30 days have passed and he is not condoning the delay, then this is your last possible action. That's the secret weapon 264. Finally, you already know this that application can be rejected, no appeal, final order, no appeal, no appeal. Yes, but of course, wherever there is no appeal, writ petition is possible if there is violation of fundamental rights. Supreme Court judgment, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, a CSE can go for either appeal or revision under 264. You can't go for appeal for one matter and revision for other matter. See, 263 is possible. One matter you go in appeal, other matter CIT does 263. But here both mechanisms are with the SSE, CIT appeals or 264. You can choose only one of them. If you choose CIT appeals for any one matter, then you can't go to 264 for any other matter. So, if there are 100 matters in your assessment order, 10 you go in appeal, 90 are final. So, these 10, reopening is not possible, 263 and 264 obviously also is not possible because they have already gone in appeal. But these 90 are final in scrutiny. Can AO do reassessment? Yes. Can CIT do 263? Yes. But 264 is not possible for these matters. Also, because if the SSC has appealed for 10, then he should have appealed for these 90 also. Appeal and 264 cannot simultaneously be invoked. And of course, once an order is passed, what are the remedies available? SSC can go to CIT appeals, go for 264, cannot invoke them together, but an apparent mistake rectification is possible for the department they can go for reassessment CIT can do 263 apparent mistake they can also do rectification rectification is possible for both parties this chapter will also be conducted in a faceless manner so that same thing transparency efficiency accountability and the orders that are passed by the authorities uska jo order giving effect to incorporate that judgment and accordingly change the computation that order giving effect will also be done in a faceless manner that's revision and this revision ka chapter completes the chunk of five chapters that fall in assessment first part of volume two it authorities search and seizure assessment appeals and revision of course in which appeals was a very very big chapter now we go ahead next a very small chapter dispute resolution committee they foreign assesses ke liye we already have drp or even before that cit appeals ITAD high court supreme court is for everyone foreign assesses ko we are giving the facility of drp special case three cits they are of small taxpayers of our country. They also deserve something. So, for the purpose of dispute resolution, we add a new A new concept will be added. So, here it was ITSC some years ago. ITSC ka concept altogether abolished. Now, we have dispute resolution committee. Small chapter, very small chapter. CIT, the central government shall constitute one or more dispute resolution committee. DR, the DRC shall resolve dispute of specified person. We will see who they are. The mechanism is optional. They could be appeal or anything is optional only. No? Compulsory to hai Only if the income that you have shown in your return is up to 50 lakh and the variation is up to 10 lakh. Income up to 50 lakh and the addition that is happening, the variation is up to 10 lakh. Only then, only such small taxpayers will be allowed to go to dispute resolution committee instead of following the long appellate procedure. But if the order is based on a search or a requisition or a survey, or any bilateral information received against you, then DRC is not available, even if 50 lakh and 10 lakh condition is fulfilled. Further, any assessee for which detention has been done under the Conservation of Foreign Exchange and Prevention of Smuggling Act, Coffee Posa, bolte isko, coffee posa. Conservation of Foreign Exchange and Prevention of Smuggling Act. If there is any prosecution under Indian Penal Code or Unlawful Activities Prevention Act or NDPS, Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act, Benami Transaction Act, Corruption Act, Money Laundering Act, then DRC is not available, not available. If there is any prosecution initiated by any IT authority, then not available. If there is any special court ka notification under trial of offenses related to transaction insecurities, so again DRC is not available. CBDT may later add some conditions also. And if the DRC has passed an order, so uska bhi order giving effect will be given. Dekho, whenever any authority will pass an order, uska order giving effect has to be done. So it has to be done within one month from the end of the month in which the order was received it will have the same powers at it authorities and drc will also function according to a t scheme matlab the entire concept of drc will also happen faceless next authority for advance ruling and where authority is now abolished instead of authority we have board r has gone and bar has come r gone bar come simply because r may judges ka required criteria educational qualification 
वॉज सो मैसेव दैट एडिकुएट पीपल वर नॉट अवेलेबल ओनली एंड बार में इट इज मस्ट द चीफ कमिश्नर लॉल the what is this concept basically before doing the transaction if you want to get the ruling in advance or which provision of law is applicable whether i am covered in treaty or not covered in treaty pehle hi bol do i don't want any magajmari later whether i am covered in treaty or not covered in treaty whether i am covered in normal rate or special rate whether mat is applicable or not applicable clarification regarding the applicable law in advance for that we have a board so applicant will make an application to the ar wherever in this chapter you find ar you replace it with bar okay decision taken by the ar was binding but bar ka decision is not binding somewhere in the chapter they said that there is a section under which bar ke order ke against you can file an appeal ar was non appealable but bar is appealable who will apply for a non resident with respect to his own tax liability for a resident with respect to tax liability of non resident with his with whom he is doing transaction for a resident if the transactions are 100 crore or more and public sector company in respect of any matter which is pending with any ao cit or itad the board shall be made by the central government and it will have two members not below cit kitna must in ar we required high court judge supreme court judge they are not available only but here ccit available in lump sum available in you know kya bolte wholesale anyone can be picked up and be made judge here by sadak se utha ke star bana dunga central government can pick up anyone and put them here even then they specify if there is any invalid uh, invalid constituency or any any wrong person who has been appointed supposedly cit has been appointed so the ruling is still going to be valid the ruling will not be invalidated obviously you have to fill a form and a fees so the first applicant non resident for self form 35c second applicant resident for non resident 34d third resident for 100 crore or more 34d and public sector company 34e and fees for transactions up to 100 crore 2 lakh between 100 crore and 300 crore 5 lakh and more than 100 crore uh, more than 300 crore to 10 lakh but for public sector company which is government owned only so they are keeping only 10000 rupees ka application fees application once filed can be withdrawn within 30 days voluntarily and beyond 30 days bar can permit and they will voluntarily permit because it is non refundable so within 30 days based on assessor's choice and after 30 days if bar permits procedure is very simple because this is till now the transaction only is not done you make an application bar will forward the application to the cit and within 6 months cit uh, the bar will either pass an order or reject reject obviously they will give you opportunity of being heard but sometimes it will be rejected without opportunity of being heard for example for the first three applicants if it is a pending matter then it is not an advance ruling for public sector company if it is pending matter at high court supreme court because first three levels pe to it has to be pending then only it will be accepted any transaction designed for tax avoidance any transaction which involves fair market interest rate or fmv of asset dekho this is question of fact which is not the work of the advance ruling department bar their job is to tell you the law not to compute fmv of any asset and bar will also function in the faceless manner so t scheme will be here also once a public sector company has made an application wherever the matter was pending they will obviously not proceed further if you take a ruling by way of fraud or misrepresentation then the ruling will be declared as void ab initio all powers of it authorities will also be given to the board of advance ruling for effective management of the law the bar can regulate own procedure matlab timing kya hoga and how many employees and all that and most importantly under aar appeal was not allowed it was non appealable but order passed by the bar can be appealed within a period of 60 days within a period of 60 days you can go to the high court order passed by bar can be directly appealed at high court within a period of 60 days and the high court may further extend the 60 days period by further 30 days if there is reasonable cause matlab file appeal within 60 days to high court and high court can extend it by 30 days and for this purpose also there is going to be a t scheme so that was our board for advance ruling next chapter tonnage tax scheme special scheme of presumptive taxation for shipping companies tonnage tax scheme is applicable only if the assessee will make an application only for indian companies engaged in shipping business but you have to maintain books of accounts even if you have opted the business of operating qualifying ships so you are maintaining operating qualifying ships for the purpose of your business main business will obviously be your uh, core activity sorry main activity and then incidental activity can also be done by the assessee main activity will be the shipping business transport of goods incidental 
activity can have anything you know like auction of unclaimed goods or something like that incidental profit can be maximum 0.25 percent of turnover from the main activity for example if turnover of main activity is 1 crore then incidental profit can be maximum 25,000 if it is 24 within the limit no problem if it is 26 then that extra 1,000 that excess excess extra has to be added to your presumptive income so income will be computed on presumptive basis but this thousand rupees will be added in that in order to get this chapter ka eligibility first you have to be a qualifying company that is an indian company whose poem that is place of effective management is in india must be doing operation of ship this is the second condition here and having at least one qualifying ship that is the third condition here so this condition is nothing but what is written here and this condition is nothing but what is written here effectively qualifying companies indian company poem in india you are operating a ship that means you can buy the ship and operate or you can charter charter means take on rent that also not the full but a part of the ship that is slot charter or space charter but it has to be qualified ship so it has to be registered in india under merchant shipping act or approved by the director general of shipping dgs either registered in india or approved should have a capacity of at least 15 net tons and a capacity certificate should be taken from the director general of shipping and that capacity certificate should be in force however following ships will be excluded a ship where main purpose is to provide land like activities like cruise is nothing but a five star hotel on water a fishing vessel a factory ship pleasure craft harbor or ferry any offshore installation any vessel which is otherwise qualified but used for fishing for more than 30 days these ships may be fulfilling the condition but they will be disqualified these seven ships will be disqualified our target is ships engaged in international goods transport there will be one income which is the tonnage income calculated on presumptive basis and the relevant shipping income something that we subtract on the less side in book profit of mat is the actual income as per books of account this is not taxable but you have to calculate to subtract in mat you have to calculate to find out incidental activity you have to maintain books of account because you are a company though you will pay tax on your presumed income how will you calculate this is what you have to pay attention on the question will give you the tons and the number of days tons and number of days you have to first take the tons and ignore the kgs ignore the kgs so you are left with this take it to the nearest hundred from here itself you can take the nearest hundred and learn the slabs thousand ten thousand twenty five thousand balance thousand ten thousand twenty five thousand balance seventy fifty three forty two twenty nine first thousand tons seventy per hundred next nine thousand that is thousand and one to ten thousand fifty three per hundred next fifteen thousand forty two by hundred and balance if any for example in this example we have thousand nine hundred remaining then we will apply 29 by 100 this will be the tonnage income per day and now use the second data in the question multiply by number of days you get the total income and plus if there is any accidental inc any excess incidental profit like our 1000 now that you will be adding here and that will become your total taxable income there is a concept called joint interest where two companies are together owning a ship then calculate the income and divide the income in the profit sharing ratio and there is a concept called joint operation where a has operated for 200 days b has operated for 165 no problem calculate the income per day and multiply by the respective number of days this is how our chapter tonnage tax scheme is going to operate tonnage tax scheme okay in this chapter i request you to go through the mcq videos of last year because this year i may or may not record the mcq videos i will just probably upload a solution a uh, solved solutions of those mcqs of direct tax and upload them on telegram because my inter batches are going on back to back and it's a very very hectic schedule till now i was uh, taking few batches of inter and more batches of final but now i am majorly taking inter ka batches and final also same number of batches are going on so the workload has excessively increased in fact i had to stop my work outside mumbai all the work assignments that i had to uh, that i was uh, honoring outside mumbai whether ahmedabad or kerala or everything everywhere my contract period was over so i decided to discontinue and focus on ca intermediate in mumbai and my online video lecture so automatically uh, inter is uh, you know uh, complementing my final wala part so despite uh, uh, stopping all the workload outside mumbai uh, still there is a schedule crisis and consequently i am not sure whether i will be able to record the mcq series and upload but definitely the solutions and I think last year ka solutions I have already uploaded new case study digest only they have not given in that MCQ series I have given some explanation of tennis text scheme I request you to go through that but last year ka MCQ series this year ka if I am not uploading so that was our chapter tennis tax scheme 
लेट्स गो अहेड नेक्स्ट चैप्टर पेनल्टीज एंड प्रोसिक्यूशन पेनल्टी इज अ मॉनिटरी फाइन ऑब्वियसली फॉर कंट्रवेंशन ऑफ लॉ बट इफ देर इज एनी रीजनेबल कॉज देन देर विल बी नो पेनल्टी वेन एवर सरकमस्टांसिस आर बियॉन्ड योर कंट्रोल नो पेनल्टी बट दिस फेसिलिटी इज नॉट अवेलेबल फॉर ऑल योर कंसीलमेंट केसेज दैट इज टू सेवेंटी ए टू सेवेंटी वन ए ए बी टू सेवेंटी वन ए ए सी टू सेवेंटी वन ए ए डी फॉर ऑल दीज केसेज रिलेटिंग टू कंसीलमेंट द फेसिलिटी इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी अवेलेबल टू यू अदरवाइज फॉर रीजनेबल कॉज देर विल बी नो पेनल्टी बिगेस्ट सेक्शन ऑफ द चैप्टर पेनल्टी फॉर अंडर रिपोर्टिंग एंड मिस रिपोर्टिंग सेक्शन टू हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी ए पेनल्टी फॉर अंडर रिपोर्टिंग एंड मिस रिपोर्टिंग penalty under section 270a for under reporting and mis reporting of income in both cases there will definitely be under reporting because if you observe 200% of the under reported tax and 50% of the under reported tax so the amount on which we calculate penalty is same under reported tax so calculate under reported income then calculate under reported tax if it is only under reporting then half 50% of the tax if it is mis reporting then double so four times this into four is this no half becomes double half ka double anuradha was ek ka double this is half ka double under reporting 50% mis reporting 200% half ka double half ka double understood or no but when will it be considered as under reporting if your income is exceeding basic exemption you don't file roi it's under reporting if your income in assessment is exceeding your income under intimation 1431 then it is going to be under reporting for every subsequent assessment multiple reassessment if subsequent ka income is greater than previous ka income it is a case of under reporting and if you declare more loss than you are eligible or your loss declared is converted into profit then it is a case of under reporting under reporting and bigger crime matlab this has happened plus bigger crime misrepresentation suppression of fact income not declared investment not declared expenses without evidence false entry or any international transaction not reported then it will become four times matlab mis reporting ka penalty will be invoked half will become double we are all aware practically matlab apna full course mein i have already told you that practically both will always happen together so there is no real answer of when only under reporting happen will happen or when only mis reporting will happen so accordingly what institute over the years has done is given suggested answer calculating penalty at half dekho first step is under reported income same in all cases second step is under reported tax same in all cases third step may we do half ke double half ke double institute also does not know the answer so in suggested answer they do half right assuming no mis reporting and of late they are framing questions in the question they are saying assume mis reporting assume no mis reporting assume mis reporting assume no mis reporting loves me loves me not loves me loves me not huh. they are writing in the question itself okay however in the following cases there will be no penalty if assessee gives an explanation and the aoa is satisfied if the income is computed on the basis of an estimate intangible addition and their books of accounts are correct and complete if there is intangible uh, uh, addition matlab estimated amount and assessee has also voluntarily disallowed some amount assessee has said that out of 10 lakh expense 2 lakh is personal aoa says no 3 lakh is personal i will disallow 1 lakh more estimated 1 lakh more no problem increase the income increase tax but there will be no penalty if international transactions are reported then and if search ka case to search ke case ke liye 270 on aab separate penalty is given so this section is not going to be applicable calculation mein this is on which questions come if you don't file roi this is where you will go wrong if at all you will go wrong for not filing return the under reported income is not the assessed income assessed income minus basic exemption baad mein tax karenge that will be if you see on assessed income because tax on under reported income which is assessed income minus basic exemption and plus basic exemption so basic exemption basic exemption cancel ultimately tax on assessed income is only under reported tax but here you will not go wrong you will go wrong here assessed income minus basic exemption is your under reported income rest is easy first assessment mein so income as per assessment is more than income as per intimation not roi roi ka amount we have to ignore calculate tax on this calculate tax on this both taxes directly don't calculate on the difference both taxes difference is under reported tax half or double based on question and now every new assessment ka income minus the previous assessment ka income will be your again under reported income then calculate tax on this and this calculate both tax amounts and the difference will be your under reported tax and finally loss cases mein we have to make a compromise the difference is under reported income and calculate tax directly on the difference then that will become your under reported tax half or double based on question you can apply for waiver 270 double a is the section where you file your waiver application if it is accepted if it is accepted then your assessment order will be non appealable because penalty is going away tax is final 
and when it is reject if it is rejected rejection is non appealable but this facility is available only in under reporting cases not available in misreporting ka cases other points you can only read and the remaining penalties of the chapter like non maintenance of books of account you'll have to learn mcq aaya objective question aaya it's a bonus that you are getting if you know the penalty ka quantum so book, books of account not maintained 25000 if tax audit not done half percent of turnover or 150000 whichever is lower but cumulative penalty will not be levied on them 271 double a failure to maintain data document information 2% of the value of transaction and failure to inform whether you are the alternate reporting entity or you are not the alternate reporting entity section 286 uniform transfer pricing documentation revision ka lecture hai bro some are like sir i watch revision lecture i will get exemption ha likha hai mere sir pe p pagal p i said p not c p likha hai mere sir pe this is a revision lecture you need to know what i am talking about here uniform transfer pricing documentation okay so penalty will be 2% of the value of transaction for non maintenance of taken document information and not informing about you are ari or not ari file like flat for not furnishing the data document information 2% more and your cumulative penalty will be leave it in case of search before 15 december 16 now you ignore you focus on this if your concealment is admitted during search 30% of undisclosed income in the roi then 60% or not accepted then also 60% of undisclosed income for the tax that you are paying under 115 bb on explained cash credit 60% plus 25 compulsory surcharge plus 4 us 78 ke upar 10% ka tax uh, 10% ka penalty is also going to be leave it if your books of accounts has any false entry or omitted entry then 100% of that false entry or omitted entry that bill ka work fake bill ka work 100% will be leave it false entry means any false invoice false evidence of sale of for sale or purchase of goods or service sale or purchase goods or service everything is covered entry without actual transaction an entry with a person who does not exist 100% penalty will be leave it next newly introduced section is a printing mistake ho gaya sorry bro sorry ye copy paste karte na i what we do is when the new section comes copy the previous section change the section number here and write the new provision here change the heading and write the new provision and then make it red color that is how editing of new book every year happens so the section got copied heading changed data change a section number also had to change to 271 a a my bad sorry kya karu abhi अभी क्या करो होता है योर पासिंग परसेंटेज इज ऑल्सो फिफ्टीन इतना तो दो यार एंड आई एम सेइंग सॉरी अभी क्या भाई जान लोगे क्या ओके okay? आपके लिए तो जान भी हासिल है लेकिन मैं दूंगा नहीं ओके ओके इंग्लिश सॉरी फॉर पासिंग एनी अनरीजनेबल बेनिफिट टू अ स्पेसिफाइड पर्सन वेन अ चैरिटेबल ट्रस्ट इज गिविंग बेनिफिट टू द स्पेसिफाइड पर्सन ऑथर फाउंडर मैनेजर ट्रस्टी सब्सटेंशियल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटर फर्स्ट टाइम में हंड्रेड ऑफ सच अमाउंट and subsequent violation mein ek ka double 200% of such violation okay so newly introduced section penalty which will be levied on charitable trust failure to get this is an amendment of course failure to get transfer pricing audit done 1 lakh rupees flat penalty is going to be applicable failure to deduct or deposit tds or tcs 100% of the tds or tcs amount 271 d sorry again isme to mistake nahi hona chahiye tha 271 D and 271 E. Once again, both cases 100 percent. But ये तो cash loans के chapter में भी है already seen. This I am speaking this section right now only. If you accept two lakh rupees or more in cash from one person in one day in respect of single transaction or transactions arising out of one occasion or event from one person, then in that case 100 percent penalty of the amount so accepted is going to be applicable on you. 100 percent penalty is going to be applicable for accepting any amount of two lakh rupees more. 2 lakh rupees or more by modes other than account pay check account pay draft or electronic mode to so 100% penalty is going to become applicable 269 st is the rule that i already spoke to so miscellaneous me now i will not do time pass and 271 dm the penalty is given 269 su if your last year ka turnover exceeded 50 crore last year ka turnover exceeded 50 crore then current year may provide facility to customers to pay through the notified provide facility they may pay in any mode but you have to provide facility for last year turn over exceeded 50 crore and failure will attract penalty of 5000 rupees per day however if it is b2b transaction you know like wholesaler buying from manufacturer to aisa thodi ke wholesaler will go and scan qr code in the factory to b2b transaction if 95% is non cash 
तो दिस सेक्शन इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल स्टेटमेंट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल ट्रांजेक्शन और रिपोर्टेबल अकाउंट यू हैव टू सबमिट अप टू थर्टी फर्स्ट मे पेनल्टी विल बी फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज पर डे एंड इफ यू गेट नोटिस देन आफ्टर दैट ऑल्सो इट विल बी फाइव हंड्रेड बट आफ्टर एक्सपायरी ऑफ नोटिस इट विल बी थाउजेंड पर डे विल फुल रॉन्ग इन्फॉर्मेशन इन स्टेटमेंट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल ट्रांजेक्शन फिफ्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज का पेनल्टी नॉन रेसिडेंट इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड हैज टू इन्फॉर्म अबाउट एक्टिविटीज इन इंडिया अदरवाइज फाइव लैक का पेनल्टी विल बी एप्लीकेबल इफ एन इंडियन कंसर्न हैज फॉरन ओनरशिप इन्फॉर्म अबाउट चेंज इन ओनरशिप टू परसेंट एनी अदर ट्रांसेक्शन फाइव लैक रुपीज टू सेवेंटी वन जी बी इज दैट वंस अगेन यूनिफॉर्म ट्रांसफर प्राइसिंग डॉक्यूमेंटेशन से रिलेटेड इफ यू डोट फर्निश द सीबीसी रिपोर्ट ऑन टाइम तो उसका सब पेनल्टीज अगेन मिसिलेनियस में क्विकली आई विल शो यू टू सेवेंटी वन एच लेट फाइलिंग ऑफ टी डी एस टी सी एस रिटर्न देन पेनल्टी विल बी मिनिमम टेन थाउजेंड मैक्सिमम वन लैक बट दिस कम्स आफ्टर वन ईयर सो दिस यू विल नॉट गेट टू सी इन प्रैक्टिकल लाइफ प्रैक्टिकल लाइफ में वी पे फीस दिस इज पेनल्टी सो यर देर विल बी रीजनेबल कॉज शो कॉज नोटिस बट फॉर लेट फाइलिंग फीस देर विल बी नथिंग गिवन टू यू डायरेक्टली लेविड दैट ऑल्सो फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट डे टू हंड्रेड पर डे बट दिस विल बी रेस्ट्रिक्टेड टू दी टी डी एस अमाउंट सो फीस विल बी फ्रॉम फर्स्ट डे टू हंड्रेड रुपीज पर डे बट नॉट मोर देन द टी डी एस अमाउंट एंड पेनल्टी विल बी लेविड आफ्टर वन ईयर मिनिमम टेन थाउजेंड मैक्सिमम वन लैक इफ यू आर गिविंग रेमिटेंसिस टू नॉन रेसिडेंट सबमिट दैट फॉर्म फिफ्टीन सी एंड सर्टिफाइड बाई फिफ्टीन सी ए दट इज फिफ्टीन सी बी सर्टिफाइड बाई अ चार्टेड अकाउंटेंट फिफ्टीन सी बी फेलियर विल अट्रैक्ट वन लैक रुपीज पर डिफॉल्ट का फ्लैट पेनल्टी एनी फॉल्स रिपोर्ट गिवन बाई द सी ए मर्चेंट बैंकर वैल्यू आर अंदर एक्ट अंडर दी एक्ट टेन थाउजेंड पर डिफॉल्ट विल बी अट्रैक्टेड एनी रिसर्च एसोसिएशन कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी रिसीविंग डोनेशन सो दैट द डोनर इज एलिजिबल फॉर डिडक्शन अंडर थर्टी फाइव और एटी जी तो द एसोसिएशन एज टू फाइल स्टेटमेंट गिविंग प्रिस्क्राइब डिटेल्स ऑफ द डोनर सो दैट इन द डोनर का रिटर्न वी कैन ऑटोमेटिकली कैलकुलेट दैट डिडक्शन यूर ऑल्सो सेम एस टी डी एस टी सी एस रिटर्न मिनिमम टेन थाउजेंड मैक्सिमम वन लैक बट देर विल ऑल्सो बी फीस ऑफ टू हंड्रेड रुपीज पर डे एंड नॉट मोर देन द अमाउंट इन डिफॉल्ट जस्ट लाइक इट वॉज मैक्सिम इक्वल टू द टी डी एस का अमाउंट इधर तो सेक्शन नंबर गलत नहीं लिखना नेक्स्ट फेलियर टू कंप्लाई विद समन्स और दीज नोटिस और साइन एनी स्टेटमेंट टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज पर डिफॉल्ट then this 100 rupees per day has been amended to 500 rupees per day this this is not very important but there is an amendment 100 per day oh late return of uh, political party charitable trust electoral trust all that okay certain association institution failure to comply with door to door survey 1000 rupees per default ka penalty is going to get attracted for pan or tan related aadhar related default 1000 rupees per default ka penalty cit can waive penalty for under reported income and all other penalties also subject to certain conditions to and full disclosure genuine hardship and all however if the under reported income is more than 5 lakh then ccit approval and if the penalty is more than 1 lakh to ccit approval because this is a case of concealment this will be a once in a lifetime opportunity and there will be no time limit but here there will be multiple chances given to you and 12 months from the end of the month it has to be decided most important feature of this is it falls in the list of cases where non appeal cannot be filed non appealable wala cases itsc wala part you can ignore because it is removed itsc itself is removed before leaving penalty compulsory to give show cause notice because if there is reasonable cause assessee will reply to this show cause notice and show that reasonable cause so you cannot leave a penalty without show cause notice and no time limit for notice but we know that no time limit for notice but it has to be before the last date of order and penalty will also now be faceless faceless penalty so we are faceless assessment appeals faceless iter faceless penalty faceless drc faceless advance ruling sab kuch faceless faceless okay while our law makers are shameless the law is becoming faceless are ye sab jo main good good things i saw i say no funny funny things it is your duty to cut this part make a reel and make it viral ठोक दीजिए लाइक लाइक ठोक दीजिए लाइक ठोक दीजिए लाइक ठोक दीजिए कमेंट कर दीजिए लाइक ठोक दीजिए लाइक ठोक दीजिए लाइक लाइक ठोको लाइक ठोको लाइक ठोको लाइक ऐसा कभी कभी आई शुड ऑल्सो से ऐसा आई थिंक ठोक दीजिए महाकाल किस सौगन लाइक ठोक दीजिए एक लाइक ठोक दीजिए समटाइम्स और अल्टरनेटिवली यू कैन मेक रील्स ऑफ दी स्मॉल फनी पार्ट सेंड इट टू मी एंड आई विल अपलोड on my channels with meme credit and your full name because if you will make it and you will upload you will not have as many followers so you make my reel send it to me i will upload on my channels and i will give you meme credit with your full name hmm. are to karo viral okay chaliye time limit to pass the penalty order if the case was subject matter of itat to expiry of financial year in which the proceedings are completed or expiry of 
six months from the end of the month in which the copy is received by CIT or CCIT, whichever is later. अगर CIT appeals है तो expiry of financial year and one year from the end of the year में whichever is later जब ये बोलते हैं तो this point number two is always going to be whichever is later. If it is CIT का case तो six months from the end of the month in which the order was passed because CIT है ना तो order was passed. And any other case like high court, supreme court और AO वाला case तो expiry of financial year in which proceedings are completed और six months from the end of the month in which the show cause notice was given again whichever is later and year also certain time lost will be excluded. So this is our chapter penalties. And now we go to, I think I will make this the last chapter because TDS I want to do in the new chapter already last lecture was very big. So let this lecture be a little smaller one and next chapter may like in TDS very big chapter. Then I will finish all the small chapters and up to transfer pricing. So I think in episode number seven, I will complete my volume two. Okay, so four episodes may I finish volume one. So three may I will finish volume two. Okay. And then another, I think three or four, three minimum, four maximum. I will finish volume three, which is your uh, heads of income wala portion. So, lagbag boy, apna estimate bitha roughly around ten lectures. Uske andar we will complete. But miscellaneous will be last. I complete miscellaneous and I stop it. So, summer like ke sir, to me abhi revision ka lecture band karunga. Agar naatak kya na, if people leave no, if I observe people are leaving now, because sir said ke miscellaneous last TDS next chapter. Agar chale gaye na beech me se. So I will start TDS. So don't leave in between. Watch till the end. Watch till the end. Well, actually, me social media channels ka ek algorithm hai under which if people are watching any video till the end, that means it is a good video. It's they go by the retention ratio. So if people are retained till the end, or there are more likes, or there are more comments. So it means that it is popular. Then the social media platform itself will promote that video. So you don't need paid promotion like my colleagues. You don't need paid paid promotion. Okay. So like, talk, DJ, talk, DJ, like, talk, DJ, and watch till the end. Or if abhi gaye na lo, if if people leave now, no, in between this lecture, then I will definitely start PDF. I'm hundred percent sure about it. Okay. So no percent shall accept two lakh or more from. Ye maine aapko already in the previous chapter bol diya hundred percent. Penalty exception being received by government or bank, or that loan wala transaction where already there is twenty thousand ka limit. Next, certain transfers to be void. If during pending proceeding you are transferring your asset, then in that case the AO can declare that transaction as a void transfer. If asset ka value is more than ten, tax amount is more than five thousand, and asset falls in this list, but not forming a part of stock interest because stock you have to sell. You can't stop your Business exception being if there is adequate consideration and AO ka approval was taken to protect the interest of revenue, AO can do something called provisional attachment. Attach your property before passing the order. It will be valid for six months and with extension two years or sixty days from order, whichever is later. However, Supreme Court in Ahmedabad Stock Exchange held that non-transferable personal privileges cannot be attached. For example, membership right of stock exchange cannot be uh, attached just because that member is a Tax defaulter, and instead of giving your property, you can give bank guarantee and get your property released, so that you can use your property for your day-to-day -day work. Any notice can be given to the SSE by post hand delivery or e-notice, which is the future e-notice. Earlier only email, but now we know, no, you know the full concept of faceless. I did in detail. You will get the notice in the e-filing account, and you will get email, SMS, real-time alert, and all. Except those electronic notices, which are authenticated electronically. Every other notice has to be signed in hand. If HUF is partitioned, then we have to give notice to all adult members. If there is no karta, if the otherwise will normally will give it to karta. If the karta is dead or incapacitated, then all adult members. And firm or AOP method, no, the dissolved firm will be deemed to be in existence. Any liaison office of non-resident has to inform the activities about activities in India to the income tax department within 60 days from the end of the previous year. If a foreign concern is holding any Ownership in an Indian concern, so Indian concern has to submit all the documents about change in ownership or any other transaction. Otherwise, its penalty is going to be applicable. This a statement that has to be submitted by a producer of cinematographic film for any payment in excess of rupees fifty thousand in course of production. Its first of all time limit. Now they will prescribe earlier. That time limit was earlier. There was time limit. That 30 days from the completion of production or end of financial year, which I was earlier, but now they have amended it. They said we are removing that time limit. We'll prescribe the time limit. But any payment in excess of 50,000 rupees, 
you have to furnish a statement about such payments and failure will attract penalty here also there is an amendment this has become 500 rupees per day jo wo 272 a ka amendment tha but in this section cinematographic film wala now any assessee engaged in other specified activity matlab not just a film production other activity kaisa event management documentary production production of programs for telecast on tv ott mirzapur mirzapur nahi मिडल क्लास आदमी आदमी नहीं जिंदगी हो तो ऐसी हो सॉरी लेट्स मिर्जापुर इज समथिंग दैट एक्साइट एनी वन सो मच वो वो पूरा आदमी फ्लो में चला जाता है एंड प्रोफेशनल क्लास गोइंग ऑन तो कमिंग बैक इवेंट मैनेजमेंट स्पोर्ट्स इवेंट मैनेजमेंट एनी अदर परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट एनी अदर एक्ट मतलब लाइक लाइक यू नो a uh, uh, stage a drama or anything they also if are making payment in excess of 50000 then they also have to submit the statement earlier it was only for production of films but now tv ott sports event any event any performing art any notified activity will be covered statement of financial transaction certain information up to 31st may 500 rupees per day but after expiry of notice 1000 and will full long information 50000 already seen in the last chapter there will be annual financial statement your ais tis in your form everything we will upload tds tcs detail demand and refund ka payment of taxes ka pending completed proceeding bilateral information ye other specified information mein your gst ka transaction they are putting your bank interest they are putting your interest on income tax refund they are putting your your life insurance medical and what not everything whatever financial transaction you have done ardik pandya kidhar kidhar kya kya karke aaya everything they are putting in your aistis means they know about you more than you know about yourself aistis correct or no uniform transfer pricing documentation if you have multiple constituent entities and your parent entity is a non resident then you can submit common transfer pricing documentation first every constituent entity in india will inform that it is the alternate reporting entity or not the alternate reporting entity obviously if the parent entity is a non resident and iska failure attracts 5 lakh ka penalty later country by country report has to be submitted only by the alternate reporting entity within 12 months from the end of the accounting year cbc report is nothing but column or financial data country wise and it will include master file matlab group information local file matlab individual company information and of course financial ट्रांजेक्शन एंड इसका जो पेनल्टी दिया है टू सेवेंटी वन जी बी के अंदर फर्स्ट वन मंथ फाइव थाउजेंड पर डे बी ऑन वन मंथ फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड एंड आफ्टर ऑर्डर इज पास मोर देन योर मंथली सैलरी समर लाइक सर पंद्रह भी तो उससे ज्यादा है नहीं नहीं आफ्टर बी कमिंग सी है फिफ्टी थाउजेंड पर डे एंड इफ द प्रिस्क्राइब अथॉरिटी इज आस्किंग फॉर एडिशनल इन्फॉर्मेशन तो उसका फेलियर फाइव थाउजेंड पर डे एंड आफ्टर ऑर्डर फिफ्टी थाउजेंड दिस सेक्शन इज एप्लीकेबल ओनली इफ द लास्ट ईयर का एंटायर ग्रुप का ग्रॉस ग्रुप टर्न ओवर exceeded 750 million euros if in public interest your information will be given to the media registered valuer can be appearing before it authority or itad for explaining valuation obviously high court supreme court may he will not be required because it's a question of fact not required in high court supreme court if you don't know the law you can send your representative call relative employee lawyer bank officer pass cbrt recognized exam cbrt conducted exam notified person and accountant and what is accountant ca with cop the moment this accountant ka definition is modified now khatam tata bye bye good bye gaya as of now ca holding certificate of practice he will be doing representation work means going and attending hearings and he is the one who does certification work tax audit report 44ab accountant as defined in explanation of section 288 15cb mat ka report 115 jb amt ka report 115 jc political party ka audit scz ca report ca report ca report ca report nahi accountant report this accountant if this is modified automatically audit ka assignments will go to our other professional brothers humko kya hum unko tax padhe apne ko kya okay already they are watching the lectures to hum humko kya okay next सर्टिफिकेशन का वर्क विल नॉट बी अलाउड इफ यू आर रिलेटेड टू दी एस एस सी रिप्रेजेंटेशन यू कैन डू फॉर योर सेल्फ ऑल्सो बट सर्टिफिकेशन विल नॉट बी अलाउड तो बेस्ड ऑन हुई दी एस एस सी कंपनी के लिए एनी पर्सन डिस्कालीफाइड टू बिकम स्टेचुटी ऑडिटर इंडिविजुअल के लिए सेल्फ और रिलेटिव एच के लिए मेंबर और रिलेटिव एओपी के लिए मेंबर और रिलेटिव फॉर्म के लिए पार्टनर और रिलेटिव ट्रस्ट के लिए द स्पेसिफाइड पर्सन एंड इफ फाउंडर इज एच देन मेंबर और रिलेटिव एंड फॉर ऑल दी अदर पर्सन हु इज क्वालिफाइड टू वेरीफाई आर वाई एंड फ्रॉम बी टू जी मतलब फ्रॉम ईयर टू ईयर वी हैव सम मोर डिस्कालीफिकेशन कंपनी का इट इज ऑलरेडी कवर्ड इन दिस सेक्शन 
itself so officer or employee partner or employee of officer or employee person convicted of fraud and 10 years have not expired business relation if you are having debt guarantee or security in excess of rupees 1 lakh then you will be disqualified from doing certification work but you can continue to do representation work and yahan pe definition of relative is different from ifos here it is spouse is your relative cannot do your audit but can represent you brother sister brother sister of spouse lineal ascendant descendant of self and spouse spouses of b to e spouse of spouse no spouses of b to e and lineal descendants of your brother sister matlab nephew niece cannot become your auditor and your wife ka nephew niece also cannot become your auditors okay income and tax will be rounded off to the nearest multiple of 10 every time you make a payment you will get a receipt you will be indemnified matlab you will never pay anything from your own pocket you can recover if there has to be any imprisonment given only presidency or first class magistrate your additional magistrate or dm or all those will not be allowed to do if there is any clerical mistake like wrong time or wrong assessment here then the return or notice or order will not become invalid not become invalid matlab it will remain not become invalid matlab remain valid only no bro okay however if there is any fundamental error that means after due date or no sign then it will be treated as invalid if you want to challenge the validity you can challenge but if you cooperate then you cannot challenge so get notice challenge it reply then you cannot challenge but after replying also before assessment you can challenge or simply put you can challenge any invalid notice before order after order you cannot challenge if you have replied and cooperated in the notice presumptions for books of accounts and documents same belong to the assessee contents are to sign and writing attestation if we want to conduct search at multiple places there can be one authorization for multiple searches there will be no case filed against officers for action done in good faith wherever it is not specifically mentioned then we can condone delay likewise we can withdraw approvals also if not specifically mentioned if no new provisions are made matlab no new budget announced then last year ka law will continue to apply and cbdt has the power to make rules act will be made by parliament rules will be made by cbdt act will tell you what to do rules will tell you how to do obviously if there is any contradiction then act will override the rules goes without saying act is the main legislation rules are subordinate legislation with this we finish our chapter miscellaneous provisions and that's the end of today's episode next episode very very important stuff coming up to tok dijiye like tok dijiye like tok dijiye tok dijiye like mahakal ki sogan tok dijiye i will see you in the next episode thank you for your patience have a nice time good night thank you very much bye bye